here, the first three steps, huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear, and today we're sitting with Travis Konechny, who um, is a uh, buddy, I guess. We've been uh, together for a little while, and know each other for a while, which has been kind of fun. Um, worked together for, for quite a while. Uh, and Trav, if you uh, had to tell anybody, hey, Trav, uh, where are you from exactly? What's the name of your town? Uh, well, it's called Clacken. Which is so an that, absolutely yeah, like, that's amazing like, name. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, just one sign, one stop sign, 20 houses. And how many um, of your relatives live in Clacken? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, not nobody, actually. I think no, a lot yeah. of them live in Bothwell, which is another place. A big uh, upgrade. So, yeah, huge upgrade. Huge yeah. upgrade. Yeah, it's like, beautiful spot. Yeah. Maybe, I think there's stoplight. Not even a stoplight in Bothwell. I don't know. There's a rink there, though. <laughs> nice the rink there. Yeah, yeah. nice rink. Yeah. But um, it's, it's a good spot. Like, lots of lots of fishing, lots of hunting. That's all I need. So. Yeah, exactly. A little Clacken. bit of water, a little bit of woods, and you're good, right? Well, that's all I need. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> And uh, so growing up, you played, obviously from Clacken, but you played all your minor hockey where? Like your IP, your novice, things like that. Where'd you, uh, where'd you play? I started with the Richtown Rebels. So um, I don't know why. I think we were in a gray zone when I grew up. So I, I'm, I'm thinking you're, my dad. You're, your life's kind of like maybe always been. In, yeah, in I'm a gray, gray zone, zone guy. Okay. Like <laughs> I live on the edge all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, I think my dad was a Ridgetown Rebel. Like I think okay. that's where he grew up. So I'm. I never so asked him actually. I just Rob, thought about this. Rob, now. <laughs> Rob, I think obviously. Robbie has something to do with yeah. my minor. Showed you the spot. tattoo and like you're exactly. playing. Exactly, he yeah. has a tattoo on his back. <laughs> uh, so the, I played for the Richtown Rebels for a couple of years. I played with my brother, played oh, up cool. with him, so that was always cool. Yeah. And uh, now I switched over to West Lorne. I played one, I think, one year there. And then uh, how far is West Lorne from Clacken? Like not. 20 minutes, not even? 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I actually did, uh, I ended up going to school. So I started school in Richtown, so then that was close, and yeah. then I did uh, equally as far, so went to West Lorne, and that's where 20 minutes from us. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. So. And what uh, what did you start playing at? Like, what time, like, I know I know Robbie's a hockey guy, and yeah, you know, yeah. your dad's obviously big into it and played growing up, and uh, so was he, you know, were you one of the kids that came out of the womb with, like, little boots on and oh, yeah. blades on? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, you had him strapped on pretty Well, I've seen it. pictures of me in, in jerseys, not by choice, too, because I know <laughs> I didn't cheer for any of those teams, yeah. but um, I, I don't know. I think I was about three or four when I yeah. started. I, I'm pretty sure the first time I jumped on the ice, I just sat in the net. I didn't want to, I didn't want to play hockey, to yeah. be honest. I, I think the first time I was basically thrown into, like, totally. my dad's like, hey, listen, just try it out, go for it, and, uh, yeah, so... I've hated it ever since. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I just I'm kind of good yeah, at it, so yeah, I just keep playing. I guess playing. it just yeah. worked out. <laughs> uh, so then you would have played, obviously, like Bridgetown, then went to West Lauren, and then when AAA came about, which would be Autumn for you guys, uh, yeah. basically, you know, you now you're stuck as far as you're because I, I think where you are, you're in a bit of a gray area as well with Elgin and Chatham, right? Yeah. And then yeah. you chose Chatham to start, which is probably closer for you anyway. Well, actually, I, I was in. Uh, so the, how it started is I was I was. Two years up, so I played up a year for two years in Elgin. Yep. And then... Oh, in Adam. In at, so when I was before Adam, oh, okay. I was play, yeah. played up for, I think, two years okay. with them. And then it would have been my first year of major Adam. I believe... It, I can't remember. It was either with the Chiefs or I ended up going back to Chatham. Yeah. Because we, we were in a gray zone, and then we actually moved. Okay. And then... Yeah. yeah so, so put you into that spot. We had to go to Chatham. Me, then I had to go over gotcha. to Chatham for the year. Yeah. So that, that was that story. And then, uh, yeah, and then I came back to the Chiefs, the, the rest of my minor hockey okay. for that. Cool. So. so you got you got granted exceptional status in novice, which is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so you played I guess that's, that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's what they're going to call it when my kid does it. <laughs> uh, no, that's cool. I mean, obviously, you're always uh, always a good player. You know, like through minor hockey, through AAA and stuff like that, you're always, uh, you know, always above the kind of above the the, the pack, setting the setting the tone. And I got to meet you. I think probably it was in Bantam. I think when uh, when we kind of got introduced and a bunch of you guys came to school with us yeah. and worked with us. And um, the one thing I remember is obviously my kind of my first impression of you when I first met you and first got to know you was crazy skill set. You know, even at that young age, so good with the puck and good at moving, and, and even your feet and stuff like that were good. Uh, but more than that, to me, was uh, your demeanor and just how you were off the ice. Even at a young age, I mean, you know, like, you know, hey, hey, Trav, you guys shower in there? Are you guys yeah. taking a sauna and having cigars? Like, what's going on, right? Oh, uh, yeah. But, you know, a always save. a fun guy and always a guy who kind of walked that line of, uh, you know, kind of almost like cocky and confident, which I think yeah. is huge. And I think if you're going to play at that next level, I think that's one thing that, 
you know, that the players need. And I guess the question for you is, have you always kind of had that, that kind of confidence in your game and, and, and how'd you get that? You know, was that from brother, uh, parents kind of just growing up and in, in, in the environment? Cause I know you got a family and a yeah. lot of stuff like that around. No, yeah, too, right? I so. think, uh, like, I don't want to pump their tires too much cause I think they hear about it enough, but like they've, I've come from a pretty athletic background. Like my, my dad's played some, some good hockey, which yeah. always pushed me to want to play. And then, um, you know, mom's, I think she's still got records hanging in high, in her high school, like for track yeah. and whatnot. So I've always had that competitive background and then my brother always pushed me like, I, you know, I big brother kind of stuff. For you want to sure, be yeah. like him. So I, I think that's what kind of pushed me to have that confidence to know that I, you know, I'm, I know I'm athletic. I just got to put it together. I got to put in the time and the work and, um, I don't know. I think just the way I carry myself is what helps. It's not that I, I don't care. Not all for sure. And it might yeah. come across that way when I talk about, like, you know, when it when it's a game. Someone's like, oh, how jacked are you for the game? I'm like, I don't know. It's like it's just another, another yeah. you know, 60 minutes. I'm going to go up and down. And see, yeah. like, you can't – you don't know what's going to happen. You just got to play. So yeah. that's kind of the way I carry myself is just not to worry about it. Yeah. Just do what you can control. And yeah. I don't know. Some, I feel like sometimes it gets me in trouble because, like, for sure. Well, it, might, it might look bad, but, yeah. like, I'm just not that superstitious guy. I'm not, like, you know, I, I put my work in when I have to put it in. Yeah. But then, you know, after that, I just like to, you know, I'm still human, right? Like, yeah. I, I, I like to get away from the rank. And well, and I think I, I think one thing that's great with you is you like having fun. Like, you oh, enjoy it. I think for you, hockey's still fun, right? Well, it's kind like of fun. always. Like, I still yeah. have guys, you know, on my, on my team. Like, I specifically, I know G always tells me to, like, come on, man, like, <laughs> Yeah, more serious. It's like a couple minutes for the game. Like, can you just <laughs> dial it in for me, please? And but yeah. uh, we have fun with it. But it, yeah. it's uh, I think that's what makes me want to keep coming back. You know, it's not like it doesn't feel like a job to me. Like, yeah. it's just like I'm hanging with the guys. I'm I'm enjoying like just being there and and messing around. But like, there's a time and a place for it, obviously, yeah. when you gotta dial it in. But uh, yeah, I, I like to be pretty loose, and I think that's what keeps me. No, and I think it's good, and I think going back to what you said earlier, like it's not like you don't care, and I know firsthand that you give a shit. Like yeah, you yeah, work yeah. hard, and yeah. when you mess a skill up or a drill up or whatever we're doing, and I'm sure you're same in practice and in games. I mean, I watch you tons in games, so I know you get pissed and hot, and you know even even it's August right now, and, yeah. and you're working on the ice, and you're getting pissed because you blew a rep up, you know. And I think yeah, that's yeah. important to have that edge, and always trying to push those limits a little bit, you know. I think is big, but I think having that inner confidence is also huge as well, you know, and man, there's like, we always joke about, or always say, I guess, as you know, talking to minor hockey players or coaches, like have fun, everything's have fun. And by the end, you're just like, it's so annoying to keep saying, have yeah, fun, yeah, but it's yeah. true. It is true. And yeah. if you're playing, you play with guys right now that they're not having that much fun. It's a job. <laughs> yeah. They got four kids. They got two yeah, dogs. Yeah. They got a U-Haul. They're like, man, this is a dragon. You know, you got other guys that have five kids and they're loving it. They're hey, you gotta you gotta drag on the fun as long as you totally, can. Totally, yeah, like, and enjoy it. And I mean, it is it is like you gotta have like this, exactly what you said. You have to have that like, you know, the the anger side too, right? Like the compete side because sure. I, I, like you said, I I do have like that temper when it comes down to it. They've probably replaced a few doors at the Wells Fargo from <laughs> my skate digging into <laughs> it or slamming. Yeah. But yeah, but at the same time, like if you can drag that fun on and you know fucking around like in the locker room on the uh, even during games like yeah yeah you know what i mean just like a bit, yeah just like, keeping it light right keeping yeah. it light why not and i think that'll be really important too for some of these young guys coming in as you become an older guy i know you're a young guy right now but as you become an older guy and we'll talk a little bit more about that nhl experience in a little bit but i think it's fun it's really are good you old us. like how old i'm 22 okay but I, we'll talk about that later uh, but I think it's really cool for the uh, for the, and you played right so at a lot of levels. But you see these older guys that are fun that enjoy it. And as oh. a young guy coming, you're like, man, this is awesome. I want to be like that guy. When well, I yeah, like I'm looking at like, see, I I've went through the first two years, and it's like, you're at the point when like you either want to keep going, or you love it or you don't love it because yeah. like it it's long season. For sure, and, like, man. Yeah, you're you're at the stage where I'm like, okay, like I could you know start making some money or. I could either not start making some money and like you, your life's going one direction or the other right now, depending on if you want to start working hard yeah. for your job or not. Yeah. And like, I'm looking at, you know, it's such a long year and G and Jake and you know, all these guys, I remember Mark Streit that I played with in my first year. Yeah. Like, he still like finds a way to have fun and every day, you know, he's in a good mood and he's working hard and like, I, like they're up in their thirties, like yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, because I'm looking at a 21. I'm like, oh man, I'm tired coming in <laughs> into the rink, and I'm like hurting, and yeah, and I got like these guys looking at me like, man, are you serious? 
Like you can't you can't roll out with the rest of us right now. You're gonna drink the coffee and just watch us do it. Like if I'm thirty whatever, thirty four and I can still do yeah. it, then you better be getting down here. Get your ass on the roller. Right yeah, now. for sure. So it, it's it's good to see because it gives you that, you know, little jump in your step where you're like, Okay, like I wanna be like these guys, I wanna figure it out. You yeah. Because oh, totally. it's easy to get in that mindset and it's like, yeah. Oh man, I got like fifteen years of this. It's yeah. so hard. But if you can find that like that fun in it, then it yeah. keeps it going. Like, oh, you want to go, like, I'm already digging to go back. Like, I'm excited to yeah. see all the guys. Which is awesome, right? Yeah, you get oh, kind of yeah. rejuvenated in the summer and then yeah, pumped you to go back. Be back. Yeah. You forget about all the bad stuff that happened. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, all the, the stuff that guys are holding against you, they kind of just get swept under the bridge yeah. and it's fresh start. So, <laughs> yeah. All your debt, you owe, everything. Oh, it totally it doesn't matter. Forget about it. Um, if we go back to minor hockey, you look at, you know, the Chiefs obviously played your minor midget year there. Um, what was it like in that minor midget year? I know there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of scouts. There's agents. There's all this stuff going on, and I think it's, uh, you know, you've got buddies that are competing with buddies, and, you know, you were fortunate to be one of those couple guys that were maybe at the top of the food chain as far as, you know, looking to- towards the draft and stuff, but what was it like for you and your family going through that process in that minor midget year? You know, whether you got drafted or not, which pretty sure you were going to get drafted, but, yeah. you know, going through that whole process as far as just, dealing with that scouts every every game and and you know kind of going through that with with yeah, mom and, dad and stuff well i think that's the the biggest part is just making sure you're on the same page right like it's it, it's so cliche to say don't worry about it because it's it's hard like i'd lie if i say i didn't sit there and for sure yeah. read rankings like everyone's going to do it and you're told not to do it and they do they don't mean anything at the yeah. end of the day like you're like anything could happen during a draft so it doesn't really matter but I think the biggest thing for me was just mom, dad, brother, grandparents were all on the same page. It was like, just don't worry about the outside world. Yeah. Don't be bringing stuff in. Like, I don't care if, you know, someone's brother or sister said this about the draft, right? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. stuff starts going around. And then, oh, for sure. And you're that young, you start worrying, right? Well, you're, you're 15, you're, man. Yeah, crazy, you're 15, right? and you start yeah. gripping the stick. And, and it's like... <laughs> It's it's so hard to say because at that age you're you're still have so much time to develop yeah. too, so you can't even really judge the draft. But yeah, um, I think that was the biggest part was just me and my family being on the same page and just mom and dad not being too hard on me. Like yeah. they, you know you know you have the skill set, you just, you have to do it yourself. Yeah, you know dad can't yell at you to the game. Like what's what's that gonna do? Totally, yeah, really, for right? sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah. So uh, a lot of times it's just, uh, geez, my mom's the worst to be honest. I really? shouldn't have to worry about my dad. Like, yeah. If I knew me and mom were coming home from a game, like I'm asking if I can sleep over at Krauser's house in minor <laughs> hockey, I'm like calling my dad, yeah, like, hey, come man, like, come get me. But, uh, it's funny you say that, man. My oh. mom was like, Dwayne, the net's so big. The puck is so small. Like, How do you not get it in just the net? Just find a hole. Just put it there. Well, man, it's not that easy, man. <laughs> like, yeah, oh. it's so, yeah. But moms are, you know, sometimes moms oh. are the ones that ride, yeah, right? Yeah, they care too much. Yeah. But now, what, was, what was your dad like, like in minor hockey? Was he, you know, was he kind of, I mean, you don't have to go into all the gruesome details of him beating you. Yeah, but, yeah uh, no, no. Like, I still have bruises. Like. <laughs> no, but was he, was he, you know, was he, hey, let's chat about the game after the game? Was he, you know, a little bit pissed about certain ga- things about the game in the car? Or was he kind of laid off? Like, how, how, how was he with you? <sighs> Honestly, overall? it was just like, for for my dad, it was just work ethic, yeah. and my mom too. Like yeah. my, what my mom doesn't know how to toe drag or whatever, yeah, yeah. so it was worth it, work for ethic sure. for them. But so she'd be pissed if like you laid an egg, didn't play hard, didn't. Oh, go if I the yeah, it's cherry right? picking, yeah. or right. it didn't matter if I had two goals or whatever. Yeah. So every second game, she's pissed at you. Oh, every game, <laughs> every game. Yeah. But but my dad was good. He was just he played. Stood in he the got kind of yeah. He just you know watched the game and then yeah. uh, probably approached me like the next day or like and and now is even better. Yeah, just because we've built that relationship, yeah, sure. I think it's not even game days like not even talkable. Yeah, like, okay. Don't even. <laughs> yeah, which is nice, right? Yeah, yeah. which is good. But sure. uh, but back then it was so like it was just easy, you know. Yeah. Because I find there is those times when like it, you almost like if, if you have that lecture all the time, oh, it just makes you don't even want to play. T- oh, it turns you yeah. off for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Like yeah, it, like you said, the belt wasn't often. Yeah, it was just like <laughs> just when needed. Just yeah, when needed. just when needed. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and I think like I, I, you know, obviously have a pretty good relationship with your dad and, and chat with him quite a bit and talk to him a lot through that minor midget year. And one thing I, I, I'll tell parents this a lot of times too about you and, and your dad. I think your dad did a lot of due diligence that year, as far as uh, in leading up to that year. He knew it was going to be a big year. He knew you guys had a good yeah. team. You had some real good players. Yeah. But he talked to a lot of people. He talked to you know universities. Talked to OHL oh, guys. Yeah. Talked to agents. And he. 
he gathered a lot of good information to kind of help navigate you. Not that he was driving the bus, but he's definitely, you know, co-pilot trying to help you oh, yeah. navigate through that stuff, which I think was, when I look back on it as a dad now, I look at how your dad was involved and he wasn't overbearing. If I want to watch a game, he wasn't banging on the glass. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? He's just sitting I would have kicked him out. Right. You know, but no, he's like, he's professional about yeah. how he approached it. And, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, like you probably know, like your dad talked to maybe too many people. Maybe he made oh. 17 too many phone calls. Oh, I think, you know, just kind of getting the information, right? Any information. But I understand I was a father. I didn't get it. I don't get it. You, no one will get it until yeah. you have a kid. But you're like, man, this is a big, you know, it was kind of a big year for you that year. And he wanted to make sure everything was placed the right way. Yeah, that, you yeah. know, that, that would kind of, and I think a lot of it you didn't even probably know about. He was just I still, I it, right? still don't know. He, yeah. He's the same way today. Like yeah. if there's something wrong, like anything wrong. And he just wants to know. He, say he's not educated on the topic that's it's bothering him, yeah. whether it's a boat or a car or anything, he has to make a phone call and know <laughs> something about it. He's yeah. always been the same, but yeah. it, you're right. It, as far as like hockey-wise, he knew everything about oh, the yeah. schools looking at me, yeah. like the options, the schooling, like anything that he could put his hands on and, and read or call yeah. or whatever. And it's good because I what do I know at that age, right? One hundred percent. So like he yeah. wasn't he wasn't gonna let me, you know, make that decision on my own. Like obviously, he let me choose where I wanted yeah. to go. Yeah. But like he made sure I knew everything yeah. for both sides, you know, pros cons. Totally. This, that. So and I think like that's that this is one thing that I think is really important for parents out there, the young hockey players. Like let's see, I never played hockey. I played soccer, and I, now my son loves or vice versa. My love, my son loves soccer. I I played hockey. I don't know much about it. But having a vested interest in that. Now, you don't have to know anything about kicking a ball or scoring a goal. Yeah, but yeah, shoot no, pass, okay, whatever. to get a scholarship, you need to take academic classes, right? To, yeah, to, yeah. to get this, you need to get, you need to have French, whatever it is. Like knowing what your son, or, especially yeah. if they're elite. And I think that's one thing, you know, kudos to your dad and your mom. They, they did their, you weren't taking crappy classes no, in no, high they school. Knew, you yeah. were making sure that you were on track to go to school if you had to. Yeah. You were on track to go to the O or whatever it was, right? Bad principal, though, in high school. Terrible. <laughs> terrible vice principal, <laughs> ball guy. He's tough. <laughs> uh, and then if we go kind of through your, that minor major year and then come up to the draft, draft day happens. I know you kind of, when it gets up to that top five picks, everyone kind of knows where you're going to go, like as far as, you know, you personally knew. But how excited were you to be that number one pick, whether it was to Timbuktu or Ottawa, which is yeah. amazing to go to Ottawa. but. Yeah. How cool was that to be that guy, like one of very few that was that number one pick to the OHL? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like I I didn't even, well, because that same year there was the exceptional status, right? And like that's right. Up yeah. until then, uh, and like like Day's an amazing player. He's got all the the tools and and toolbox. It's just uh, for whatever reason they decided to take a forward and yeah. Um, but it was crazy because going into it, I never expected that. Like you look at. Uh, all the previous exceptionals, and I just didn't even put it in my head that I was right. potentially going yeah, first yeah. until, you know, I went down there and I thought I was just going for a, a visit just so they would do their due diligence yeah. to, to, you know, this is Konechny, here's what he's all about, it's his yeah. family. And, uh, you know, they tell me they're taking me, and it's like a week before, and I'm like... That's pretty cool. Oh, I was, yeah. it was in, it's just insane. Like, I brought my grandparents. I just thought we were going for a visit, yeah. just going to check out the rink. Yeah. And, and uh, they dropped that on me, so it was it was incredible. And um, I remember the, the guy was wearing, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a nice, it was Salvation Army suit. It was beautiful. It was checkered, <laughs> white, and black. I got to pick it. Nice, yeah. nice. I, like, how did I leave the house? Like, yeah. mom let me out like yeah, that. Yeah, that's amazing. Tough. Yeah. And uh, nice comb over with a part, too. It's oh, like, nice. Yeah, we can look it school. up, too. You're it's nice. Old school. It's on Google. Go yeah, I'll have to check it out for sure. But it uh, it's crazy. We had we yeah. had a blast with it. That's cool. It was awesome. Mom and Dad loved it. Chase Chase still follows it like Ottawa, yeah, yeah. right? Just and yeah, Saturday. for sure. So it's cool. It yeah. comes like a you know a little uh, connection for everybody once once you get drafted. But to be first and blown up like that, I yeah. got to see the behind the scenes. Like I knew when Kraus was getting drafted because I was at the the actual office oh, so yeah, like right. names are coming in and I'm checking it out right so like I should have I should have ruined it for them <laughs> like hey buddy you're going next funny like, K-Town yeah, <laughs> yeah I know that, that's really cool actually yeah for sure and then now get, being the first pick overall obviously now you're starting a whole new chapter of hockey going from minor hockey to the O and what's that like as far as now like oh shit now you know now there's expectations and yeah, no pressure eh? yeah right yeah. it's not like it was seventh rounder I can figure it out yeah. but you're a first rounder. It's you know now or first overall. Now it's like man, you're you basically have a bullseye on your back mm -hmm. from camp on. You know. Well, I think uh, the main thing for me was just 
you know, I don't know. I think the first year wasn't that bad. I didn't have any pressure or expectations for myself. It was just to go in and, you know, I, I knew I had the talent to be in the OHL and, and I was on a team at the time who was at the bottom. So, yeah. you know, we, I knew we weren't going to be anything great yeah. at that year. So I was just having yeah. fun and playing. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I remember being so young, like the older guys probably, like when I got put on the line, I think it was with the two oldest guys, the OAs at the time. And uh, they're like, why are we playing with this 16-year-old kid? <laughs> like, this is, like, he won't shut yeah. up. Like, he's so annoying and yeah. he's laughing and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And uh, but it ended up working out. We had we had a good year, and yeah. I think the hardest thing was the second year because yeah. I, I then my expectations were like, okay, I was first in the yeah. OHL draft. Now like, don't drop, you yeah. know. And like, and yeah. I think the thing for me was like, I always wanted to wherever I went in the O, I I wanted to improve and, and better myself in the next draft. Yeah, which obviously you know it's a little I, tough. It's a little, a little tough, tough when high you, expectations. It, there. Exactly. <laughs> I, yeah. So uh, that that was tough, but uh, you know at the same time. It, I, I think I let it get to me a little too much that second, the second year. Second year, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't have the year I should have, and, yeah. and I wish I could go back. But man, there, there's but like on that 18 year old year for that draft year. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on you, young guys, as far as just oh. especially you guys that are like your first overall. You want to go in the first round next year, right? Yeah, like, like if there's you no don't, doubt. it's almost embarrassing. So every you know? every game, you're like, I gotta get cookies. I gotta get some points. And, you know, you gotta you gotta put something up. And, and there's a guy in a, a black jacket writing down everything Everywhere. you're doing. Every rank like, you go oh, into, man. yeah. It's tough, man. Like, like I, no back check, and yeah, you're like, oh, that's my guy. Yeah, for sure. Like now, whatever. On top of all that, so you got that going on, obviously, and then on top of that, you've got a coach that's uh, that's a hard coach. Like he's a tough coach. He's an yeah. old school coach. That's uh, you know not a bad coach, just a different style coach that's hard and hard on you, right? Oh, yeah. So now you've got your draft, you got your status there, trying to get that pumped as much as you can. You got a coach that's just trying to get you play his way and yeah. both both sides of the puck and. You know that you know there, there's a lot of stuff for a young guy to deal with. You know in those years, and whether it's minor hockey or O or NHL doesn't matter. But yeah. you're still 16, 17, 18 years oh, old, yeah. like trying to deal with all the stuff, being away from home. Like there's a there's it's a time, tough. Right? It's, like, it's definitely like a lot of phone calls. Yeah, trying to figure. Like, you know what I mean? Like for sure. I'm I'm uh, like you said. You're trying to balance everything. And yeah. when I'm you know I'm I th- I forget what I had, but I. I was like two goals at Christmas or something. Like I, was, I remember, you had a super slow start. Like the oh start my, was my like start molasses. was bad, and yeah. it was like even like my agents and guys, they're like, "Hey, like, you know, you got it, but yeah. like, where is it? Like, we yeah. need to we need to start going here." And um, you know, and then I felt like I was almost trying to do too much. And yeah. then, like you said, like then the coach and I were like going back and forth because I'm trying to play a certain way to you know produce and do this and that, but like also trying to play the team game yeah. so it was really difficult and and uh honestly i think my hardest year of hockey because i just yeah. couldn't i couldn't figure it out yeah i was all over the place but uh second well, half look, we figured it out but yeah you had a good you sprung the second half yeah. which kind of upped your stock and obviously helped though for the draft and stuff yeah. like that do you, when you when you look back on that year though hockey that tough year do you think that that helped kind of Oh, basically yeah. made you a lot tougher for the next coach you oh, deal you with. You never know, thing, yeah. Right? yeah. Like, whatever I get now, I think I've dealt with everything, yeah. like, you know, every style, like, from yeah. minor up until now in the NHL, I think I've dealt with, you know, coaches that let me play my style and just, you know, kind of let you do your thing. Some coaches want to be on you yeah. constantly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've dealt with it all. Yeah. And, uh, and, and on now, top of that year, you also got thrown the C, right? And kind of a bit of, yeah, a, a bit that, of an awkward... <laughs> Yeah, it awkward was, way. <laughs> yeah, I hope Brandon Bell is listening to this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, so it happened? was like it was kind of weird. Like there was, I think it was just because he was he was in his OA season and yeah. and um, they just wanted me being young. Like I was gonna be with the team for the next couple of years, so they just wanted to switch yeah. over the leadership. And he was still like our our leader in the room. Like he, he had an A, and yeah. he was always our captain. But um, I don't know. It was it was just different yeah. at the time because I remember it was like the second game of the year, and we were doing real good. We were like zero and four right off the start, <laughs> so we were super hot. <laughs> and uh, I remember Brownie came in the room and just it was and not happy. No, yeah. no. Um, it was and it was, we were in Owen Sound. I remember we were in Owen Sound, and he just said, uh, "Connectney, you're you're going to be our captain." Uh, and then he threw the assistants out. I forget all of them and. Uh, and Belzy was the captain last year. And Belzy was the captain, and I remember my gut just. Oh, man. And he was our tough guy too, so I'm thinking I'm about to eat a few, right? Like he's like yeah. sitting right Four here gone. beside me. Yeah. And we still got like a six-hour bus ride home, so <laughs> right. I'm like this is awful. 
But uh, no, he was great about it. Like, it was it was awesome. Like, we, and he helped me a lot too. Oh, that's good. And that's like awesome. Stud yeah. I remember all the guys there that like yeah. really helped me. Yeah. And uh, just it was a fun experience though. Yeah. Because like I was a young captain. Like, I was For sure. second year. Yeah. And uh, no, and but we we had, like we we messed with Belzy too. Like after that, like some somebody for Christmas got him. Uh, so what was this? A Secret Santa that you always do, and, yeah, and yeah. someone got him like a bottle of Captain Morgan, and they just like put a cistern over uh, <laughs> over the oh, seat. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So it, it, we've yeah, had fun good. with it. If anything, I mean, it's, it's it's cool in hockey and sports in general. But you take like a really shitty situation, really like something that you know you're like, I'm gonna get in one here. Right? You know, I I feel terrible. I just like hear about you can have a back. I don't even. Yeah, want yeah, it, you know? yeah. It's awful. And it kind of turned into a kind of a bit of a bonding thing. And you know, you guys could probably rally around a little bit. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah, and we played together that whole year too. So right. like, it, w- it wasn't like it affected us, but yeah. it was just like. In you know, that you, moment, you know right? when he like he earned that. So he's yeah. been there. He's an OA. He's like our our main leader. But it wasn't about that. You know, it was yeah. like it was. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was <laughs> still old man. Oh, it's yeah. Tough. It's yeah, tough bus ride for sure. So fast forward out of the draft. So now you know you go through your season. Obviously, have a good year. Um, get invited to the combine. Probably a pretty cool experience that year as well. You played in the World Juniors, right? That was at the. I don't think that was no. That no, was, was the, next uh, year. That was the prospect game. We That's played right. in the prospects game. That was the one that year. And then, uh, and then World Juniors would have been the next year. Would have been the next year, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, that was, we'll talk about that. Yeah. I so yeah. we'll go through the draft real quick because, uh, you know, I was fortunate. Mitch, uh, Mitch Stewart and I went down to the Florida for the draft because there was you, Kraus, uh, you know, uh, Lawson Kraus and Mitch Van yeah, and yeah. Martinette and Kairou, a bunch of guys from the area that were going to be getting drafted. So we went down and, uh, it was a really cool experience for me because the first time I'd been to an actual live draft and kind of, you know, saw the whole process yeah, go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was it was really really cool. But I I, I want to ask you because I I can't imagine what this is like sitting in that arena just waiting you know for your name to 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 get called. And I know Kroos he was like you know top five pick, top six pick. He drops to eleven like oh yeah. man. And then you know and then you're sitting there thinking maybe hopefully first maybe you know second and then it's just like <laughs> and then like somehow I ended up in twenty four. Yeah, like, I don't know how. But I mean how <laughs> like <laughs> when you when you, when as the numbers are going down like what do you like what's like. Are you just kind of like obviously fake smiling it like oh it makes good bad I love yeah, this yeah it's great. I'm just a good to time. be here yeah well like yeah like you said after one and two spots were gone then I had no idea where I was going <laughs> but I was uh, it was a tough day because you know I knew the the, the NHL rankings are a little more a little more accurate than yeah. than uh, than most and uh, you know I knew I was somewhere between you know fifteen to twenty that's where I thought I was gonna go yeah. And, um, you know, and my dad a couple of times and like no one even knows the story really because it was just me and him and mom sitting there. And uh, there was the I forget if it was like ESPN or TSN, one of their their little uh, broadcasting booths right beside us. And every time a player gets picked or about to get picked, the camera will find that player. I think they're like maybe told uh, okay. in advance yeah. and then or potential player that's supposed to be drafted here. Yeah. And uh, I think it was around 12, like. We're sitting there, and, and my dad sees the the thing come up. It was my face, and it was Boston's pick. And he just nudges me and like, "Hey, buddy, like I think it's you. Congrats!" And then I'm sitting there at 24. <laughs> I'm like, "Dad, like Thanks, come on, Dad. man. You had my hopes up." <laughs> oh man, like 12 picks ago, but now what was 12 through 24? Like every oh, time you're just like, hey, it was aw- it was awful. That's like, a that's it, a grind, eh? Yeah, it was it was, and you know what's funny? I actually uh, and no one knows this too. If you watch the video, I'm no sweat stains. I had uh, I had pads on my arms. No way. Oh yeah, I stuck them. Did you? Yeah, mom rigged it up for me. She stuck them on the inside of my dress that's shirt. That's sick because yeah. you normally see big oh, pizzas I under oh, there. Oh, I yeah. would have had some pitters yeah. for sure, like down the side. That's too. a great move. Yeah, actually, so for, like, I threw weddings those and on. stuff. Yeah, yeah just for the reception. I mean, after that, Good vest or just for too. the church part. After you that, never, yeah. fine. <laughs> I mean, you're ripping it up. This oh yeah, yeah. This jersey's off. That's Anyways. a good move. Yeah, so I, I ta- so if I wasn't doing that, so I you're the been... only guy in Florida without pit stains. Exactly, at the and everyone's nice. like, "What's this guy doing? Like, <laughs> I want to, I want to see this guy's doctor." Yeah. So I, I did that, uh, twelve through twenty four. It was, I was sweating oh, nonstop, man, yeah. like, and and I couldn't even talk. Like my my parents are trying to keep, like, hey, it's all, like, dad yeah. saying, hey, if you go yeah. tomorrow, it's all good. Like nothing wrong with the second yeah. round, and. I just had a hunch something something was going yeah. on around 24 because it was kind of a cool story. I was talking to Bobby Clark in the elevator a couple of days before the draft. I'm sitting yeah. there, and, and he just mentioned to me, you know, uh, what's your name? I told him my name, and he's, oh, okay. Like, 
too bad we're, we're higher than we are. If we wanted you, we'd have to move up. And I just laughed, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, sure enough, all of a sudden I see Philly moves up a spot, a couple spots, right, right. and, and yeah, it, just, tr- like, yeah. it just hit me. All of a sudden I was like, he literally told me in the elevator that, might happen. that yeah. if they can get me, they would That's move cool. up. That's cool. And I had hardly talked. Like, I talked to him a couple times, yeah. a few visits, but I never thought yeah. until like that moment that I yeah. was getting picked. and. That's cool. Yeah, it was a cool experience, but it was the longest day. Yeah, the longest I day of my life. Like, yeah. And I can't even describe it because, like, I, I watched the video probably 50 times on the way home, just me walking up on stage. I, I don't remember this. I was black. Like, really, I was just eh? like, don't remember it. Yeah. And I'm sure, like, most guys talk to you on that draft day. That's the same thing. It's just so fast and so, oh, like, it the, just flies by. Yeah, the pick part is slow as molasses, but then when you After actually, that. it's like bang, bang. Cause then you guys had a little party, a little like up yeah, in the suite, yeah, doing yeah. your whole thing. And yeah. And then you're, yeah. Yeah. And then you're actually back. Like, then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. You're just out of it. Yeah. You're done. But it was, it was a fun day. Yeah. But like, and I couldn't even really, like, you can't even enjoy the nighttime because, yeah. like, I'm sitting there, like, we're doing the interview process and I'm loving it, right? Like, I'm wearing, rocking my Philly jersey, rocking around. Yeah. And then next thing you know, like, it's 1 a.m. and you're coming back to the hotel. Right. And, like, I didn't yeah. know at the time that I was getting the award the next day, the E.J. McGuire oh, Award Oh, right. Whatever. Yeah, for the, yeah, for the CHL. So right? I'd, be, I'd be back at, like, 7 or 8 a.m. the next day at the rink. Or like oh, the, the really? Draft. So I'm like, come on. Like, I just want to let loose a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> no, it was good. Yeah. Like, it was obviously pretty cool getting yeah. that award. But it was a stressful thing. Yeah, like, no it doubt, was man. Tough. For sure. I more or less enjoyed it when I came home with yeah. a little thing. So. Yeah. No, that's cool. And then, so then... Uh, Let's let's go forward to basically development camp. So you get the draft, and then your development camp is almost a week right after the draft, right? So you're yeah, going ours right is right away. Philly right after. Yeah. And what was that like as far as meeting the coaches, meeting the probably the AHL coaches there, I'm assuming, and some of the brass, and yeah. and then obviously all all the draft picks, right, from that year, a couple of years before that, and you know you get a chance to kind of wear Philly gear for the first time and kind of experience the whole thing. And oh yeah. You know, what was that like as far as just being that young minor hockey player to junior to now? Holy smokes, man. I'm actually, like, wearing yeah. an NHL practice jersey here. Well, it was pretty – yeah, it was definitely awesome. I think the main thing for me going to camp was just hoping I got a bag coming home with yeah, me. Yeah, so some free stuff. Rock <laughs> T- yeah, TPH, I'm wearing my Flyers gear. But yeah. I think uh, – I don't know. It, w- it was, like, definitely a different experience because you go in, you know – like, there's I know now that I'm there – I know all the minor guys. Like I know all the yeah. NHL guys. I know all the prospects. I just know everybody from being there. So you have those clicks yeah. when you're there. Yeah. But like the the guy's first year is so tough because like man, yeah. you got like I remember Lawton at the time. He, he I remember I just knew him from being in Oshawa yeah. and and he had all his buddies and they weren't on the team. Some were on the team. So he was hanging with Raffle or right. Delzato and then like all the other minor guys that he was hanging out with and i didn't know anybody you know what i mean so i'd so be like, in camp right any camp yeah, the, yeah, like, yeah development camp like i, I don't yeah, okay. you don't know anybody so you're on an island basically yeah because there, right? everyone yeah. knows their little buddies right yeah. they've been through a couple development yeah. camps so you're just flying solo like you're just grinding it out and yeah. you're to the rink twice a day we're yeah, working long, out man. once yeah it's a long process so you're just you know trying to impress as many people as you can but yeah like you're you're trying to make buddies, you're trying to do this, trying to do that. But you know, sometimes I was drafted there alone too. Like a lot of guys know people. Yeah. When they get there. Right. Like uh, yeah. Like they might like know a guy from the scout queue, or, or, or from oh, the players, queue. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, players. Sure. Like you might know a guy. Yeah. And uh, I don't really remember. I think I knew um, one guy, Brett McKenzie. He was there on like a tr- just like a like a PT. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's just trying out at development camp and. And that was the only guy I really knew. Really, eh? and it was yeah. Everyone had their clicks. So yeah. it, it was like, it, it was scary for me. And you're go. also coming in again as like the first rounder. So some some guys are like wanting to get to know you. Some guys don't because yeah. they want to fucking take your job. So exactly. Like, I yeah, want yeah, this yeah. Guy to make the team. I'm tougher than him. I'm yeah, better yeah. than him. And Screw this guy. Yeah, it happens, right? And you got like basically a small window. You got a week or you know seven days basically to impress and try to you know. Yeah. And you're under a microscope, like you know what it's like. like. Everything you do from the time you get there to the time you leave, for the most yeah. part, is pretty much scrutinized. Yeah. And oh, he didn't look at me the right way. Well, everything, you know, the, yeah. threw his water bottle in the wrong. I didn't put it in the recycle. Like it's 100%. everything's kind of. And it's not necessarily they use that stuff. No, no, but it's, but it's just like up, right? It, the, you know, yeah. they're looking at everything because yeah. they want to get to know you. They don't know you. Yeah. You know, they they like you're walking in and you're just a blank piece of paper, and then everything you're doing is written down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, so that's sure. the only thing they have to go by. Yeah. So, oh, exactly. Know, so then after so after development camp, now you have your summer. Obviously, now that's a tough summer for you because, you know, as 
you know, high rank guys, you end up having your end of your season, however long you go in the playoffs. Then right after that, you got your combine. So everyone goes down to what, you know, Buffalo or Toronto to your yeah. one week combine. Then right after that, we got hockey Canada off, camps too. Hockey Canada camp. Then you got draft. Then you've got development camp. So your summer is so chopped up, mm-hmm. right? So following yeah. development camp, you come back in a couple weeks of training. And then I think you've got World Junior Camp again after that, right? Yeah, it was. Because it was in probably yeah. end of August. Yeah, we were. July or something, right? Yeah, I forget. I think yeah. we were in Plymouth or something. And how was, how did, uh, like, how was, how was World Junior Camp? Because you just came back from development camp, come home for a couple weeks, then you're going to World Junior Camp. How was that? Yeah. No, it was, it was good. I remember it was, it's actually a lot of fun. And you had buddies there too, yeah, right? Yeah, like, Krause yeah. were there and, and, uh, we had Mitch there too. So yeah. we had a lot of fun. But, uh, honestly, it felt very similar to development camp yeah. because, uh, it, it was also very, like, scouted. So, like, yeah. Philly was all there. Right. And, like, all the other NHL teams are there, too. So it kind of feels uh, – because you're just coming back from development camp. Yeah. You get, like, a couple weeks, like you said. And even if you did come back, some players stay right there, right, in, in their NHL city. Like, they'll okay. right out of development and just train camp. There. Just train yeah, there. But right. I, I chose to come back. But, yeah. no, it, it was good. Like, yeah. we had a lot of fun. And, like, you, you try – it's just – those camps are hard because you, you're, you're going no phone. You're doing like yeah. the curfew stuff, and yeah. like because I remember when I actually made World Juniors, it's like you got to keep your phone is the biggest deal ever, right? With Team Canada, like, <laughs> you're oh a my big god, boy now. like yeah. it's awesome. I get to text my girlfriend, yeah. like it's this is great. Yeah. So, uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, we always enjoyed those camps. Those are the best because yeah. like, then that's when everyone gets together, right? Or if you have a buddy in BC that you like hanging with, like you don't you see him once a year at the camp. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, for, so, oh, for sure. And the other thing with no phone though, we just. Uh, I, I was fortunate. I just got an opportunity to go down to the world to the under 17s in mm-hmm. Calgary just for the, their development camp, mm-hmm. and we were doing some uh, some skill development stuff there. But they had a no phone policy. So, yeah. but you know what? It really forced the boys to talk. And oh, even it's, on the it's bus, good. It it's just amazing. tough when you're used to 100%. it. Hundred percent. Like you, you know, some guys are buried in their phone. Totally. So, but it was it was really it was like old school, like so old school because yeah. guys were out on the bus chatting, whereas you know like dinner either, actually talking, right? You, know? and you get off the out of the rink a long day. What is everyone doing? Just like on their phone, yeah. on their phone, right? Where this it was really cool. Like it's a good. I think it's a great policy. I think it sucks sometimes because, you know, everyone's so used to having that phone. But at the yeah. end of the day, I think if, you know, I think it's really, really cool for that bonding process. Yeah. And at that age, term. too, you don't you don't have a wife. Yeah. You don't have to, like, yeah. Nothing answer important. home. Yeah. Like, your parents know you're safe, yeah. then it's all good. So yeah. I think that's probably the toughest part for, for guys that age is they want to be texting their yeah. girly friends back home. But like, And maybe check an Instagram for, whatever. Some, for some pictures. Yeah, and, you know, whatever, updates, right? yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, Tinder, like, maybe. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> Tinder or Cross in Europe over there. <laughs> sure, that'd be good. Yeah. So then you go – so then you go back to Philly's camp, obviously, for me and camp. And then how'd that go and, and, and who kind of gave you the news of – of kind of how camp went and like how was your exit interview and all that stuff in that first main camp for you as a as a you know newly drafted guy to, to to Philly. Yeah, you know what? It was actually a weird camp because now that I've been through three, I think three, it was the first one was it was so different because we had our our new coach come in, right. so it was Hack's first year. Yeah, and I think their process was you know let's just uh, get our team together as early as possible. We're not messing around with draft picks. Okay. We're not giving kids opportunity. Like we're just gonna get our team and get our coach comfy and get everything settled okay. in. So it's kind of weird because like right away, like the first cut, they pretty much sent everyone sh- like shredded it yeah, right away. They okay. just kind of cut it right because yeah. now that I've been through them, I noticed like they will keep yeah. some players around, give sure. them some opportunity and stuff. And I'm definitely not saying I would have made it yeah, my yeah. first year. I'm yeah. just saying like it, it was kind of it was different than yeah. now because. You know, I remember Hexy and and uh, and me and Proby, like we all. I was talking to Provorov after. Yeah. And uh, you know, we both thought, you know, we, maybe we had like some. <laughs> so we had a good practice. I scored a goal last game. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. And then uh, you know, what time's your flight, Proby? Like, we're, <laughs> see at the airport, kind of thing. But yeah. No, it was it was different. Yeah. But uh, and with getting you know with getting sent home, not it's not the worst. Obviously, it's not the worst. Oh, it's thing the best. The world. I think it's the best thing. Yeah. And then other opportunities come up, like. Right, so like playing for the World Juniors. Now, well, that was you, what Hexy told me. Yeah, which is like awesome. he gave me these goals. He's like, you're going home, but like you're not going you empty handed. Like yeah. this is your goal. Like yeah. I want you to be one of the top scorers in the OHL. I want you to yeah. do this at World Juniors and and do this and do that. So that that was my new goal. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it was I was playing for Ottawa and I was playing for Sarnia and doing all that as a team. But in the back of my yeah, mind, I knew it. I had to reach certain goals. Yeah. 
for my yeah. you know my angle. So. No, for sure. And then how so World Juniors? Let's set that up a little bit. So you make the team, obviously, which is awesome. Yeah. And where like, when you get in there and you look at the depth chart on that team, where where are you kind of penciled and start? <laughs> <laughs> to start, like right beside Stick Boy, like we're like, like we're grocery start. stick, <laughs> right oh, in the middle yeah. of the bench, hey, just separating oh, the D and the boards. Yeah. Like I remember that camp started in Toronto, and I was like, and I knew the coach is pretty good. Like I knew the staff because you yeah. do so many camps, yeah. And and law, like obviously bothers me so much because good for him that he played that year before and he yeah, won the right, gold. right. But then we go to our year's World Junior and, and Kroos, he's up in the stands watching all the exhibition games because he already knows he's on the team so right. he didn't have to play him. Right. And that's bothering me like yeah. so much because he's like, come on, Trav. Like, he, I'm like, like, you're not even playing, yeah. man. Like, just shut <laughs> up. Like, leave me alone. And like, some of the staff's like, man, like, you, like, you're not going to make it if you're playing like this because I was so nervous. Right. Because I already knew Law's on the team. And, like, yeah. and you know better than anybody, me and Law love competing against yeah. each other. Yeah. So, like, knowing he already had the green light was, like, just in my head. And yeah. I was playing so bad. And uh, I don't, yeah, I ended up just finding a role I was penalty killing, yeah. which I haven't did ever again. Yeah, right. Probably from our finish. Like, we lost. <laughs> right. Line A scored, like, four power play goals. and Yeah. I couldn't block on Flamingo. <laughs> so, yeah. But it, it was. But I mean, your, your, uh, your minutes ended up going up throughout the tournament. They, they like, went yeah. up because our yeah. role, like, our role yeah. kind of changed. Like, as a fourth line, we, it, there's no really, like, no, when you man, look at those teams, there's no. Top to bottom, it's ridiculous. It, it, they're like, just so yeah. skilled, those teams. Yeah. But we kind of settled in as, like, the shutdown line. Yeah. And, um, there's me, Quenville, and Mitch Stevens. Yeah. I think it ended up being. Because he just played well, man. Oh, we played a Produced lot of good him. minutes. Yeah. Like we played hard. It was and good. It was, it was fun. Because I remember at the start of the tournament watching, like, oh man, like Charles not getting much ice, you know. And <laughs> and then as the tournament went on, though, just like I think you've done a lot of places is as as things get all go on and pressure mounts and things get more intense. Yeah. You know, you keep rising, and I think that's that's kind of a testament to who you are. But you know, it was nice to see it get rewarded a little bit and, you know, get some points and kind of yeah. get in that whole flow and kind of moving with it, which is which is oh, awesome. Yeah. And so. if you look, like, I think for the most part, I just changed my game in that tournament and I yeah. started, like, blowing guys up. Yeah. Like, if you search up, like, Travis highlights from World Juniors, it's literally just guys getting demolished. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't even do anything else. I was like, I could have used no stick that whole tournament. <laughs> that would have been fine. Yeah. But, yeah. uh and and the the main thing I remember from that tournament was when I came back to Sarnia when I got traded. Okay. So for yeah. me that was that was honestly when I think of the World Juniors that's the only thing I think about because I remember mid mid tournament I was told on oh, Twitter yeah. and all right. this stuff. Right. You know I got traded. And yeah. I'm like not a chance because there's a World Junior freeze right. Right. Like you can't. So that's I'm right. texting my coach like Brownie like hey man like what's going on like are you trading me he's like no no you're our captain like not a chance so I'm like okay I'm all good. So I, no way. I, the moment, the literally like, Freeze like ends. the buzzer goes off and we're out of the tournament and my agents call me like, Hey man, like they're, they're wanting to deal you. So like, I, I'm kind of glad he didn't tell me at the time because yeah. it would have kind of rattled you yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 I would have been all over the place. Yeah. But like, I'm, I'm on a plane all the way back from Europe knowing I'm that sitting you're... there going like. Do I do this? Do I not? Like, what's going on? Because you had some apprehensions about about uh, pulling the trigger on that, right? Like, you weren't sure. Well, about, I, I, yeah, yeah. at the start, I was yeah pretty confident that I wasn't going to do it, and yeah. then you know, I don't a couple things you know went back and forth between uh, me and Ottawa, and I ended up making the call that I wanted to go over to Sarnia, which was the best thing yeah. that I've ever you know did yeah, good as for far you. as my yeah. choice. Like, played awesome there, but yeah. Uh, that yeah, it was crazy, man. That like, is nuts, man. It yeah, did. for sure. Yeah, it was Especially like that's that whole whirlwind of hockey where you know you're you're settled in. You got good billets. You got establishment. You got buddies yeah. there. You got friends, family, whatever. Not even family, but and then all of a sudden, like boom, it's gone. Gone. Like, and you're like, oh, man. same thing is coming in development camp. I'm going into a new room in Sarnia where like everyone's doing their little inside yeah. jokes, and I'm everyone's and you're dying at Christmas, laughing. so they've been together for like oh, three, four months, man. I'm sitting yeah. there just a, a sitting duck. I have yeah. no idea what's going on, yeah. and. Oh, so yeah. after about like 35, 45 seconds, you're yeah, good. Yeah, I was in the shower. <laughs> I was good before yeah. practice. Hey, if you just take no clothes on, no yeah, big deal. Yeah, it's, it's not what casual. we do when we get You've to the rink. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. 
Um, and I mean, that's the one thing about hockey guys, you know, any, any age, young ages, you all, you know, we're running little, little young kid camps right now and kids come in the first day, everyone's shy and quiet by Wednesday, they're bouncing Not off the walls, chance. having a blast. Quiet, yeah. Right. So even like as they're, as they're young, but as you get older, it's so, you know, you, you, you're definitely intimidated when you first walk into a locker room, you don't know anybody, but within five, 10 minutes to somebody's like, Hey, I'm so-and-so. Hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah. you know, hey you're from, yeah, you're from, hey, yeah. Oh, you know, sudden, hell, you know, yeah. yeah, it's like, man, you yeah. got one degree of separation. You kind of get connected and you're all tied in, you know? Which is which is one of the nice things for sure. Um, so the next year you end up getting an opportunity, obviously again at development camp or at uh, probably development camp for you, and then main camp again, and then yeah. things turn out a little bit differently for you that year. Now were you were you a little more confident that second year going in as far as like obviously you're more confident going into camp being a second year guy, and now you know what's yeah. going on. But were you more confident like I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to push at making this team. Well, I I had like a I didn't think I had like a a good shot at making it like I, I was confident yeah. that I was on the team but like I knew that if I if I did the same thing that I did in my first development camp and like impressed and then went into rookie camp and then main camp and and really pushed the pace that like I could maybe change his mind on young because I know he didn't like keeping young guys actually yeah. like yeah. he because in it it's hard because yeah. if you keep a young guy at the wrong time it can really yeah. you know screw with your career so um I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Lawton always tells me I made it by default because he got hurt. In camp. <laughs> so that that's what that's his story. So uh but I don't I think it was just the 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 timing, you know what I mean? Right. Like I think time like I just I had a good camp. I scored yeah. I think three or four goals. Yeah. Which uh was crazy because I don't know how I scored that many and you know, five preseason games yeah. and I couldn't put that up all year. Like, <laughs> I just, you know, it's a lot yeah. different. So, yeah. well, no one's trying in preseason. Oh, so exactly. You know. <laughs> I figured that out now, and like, I'm, I'm on the team now, and I'm looking at some oh, of the guys. Well, that's how I was so good. Yeah, but, Maybe I'll just play preseason. <laughs> yeah, seriously. These stats count. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was good, and I remember Hexy telling me, like, on, in my meeting, it was pretty cool. He told me, like, I've never, ever liked doing this, and I, and I thought. So this is with day off. Like we had a okay. day off. It was after the last preseason game. So you're still not sure what's going on. You got a day and off. And I remember flying yeah. home from Boston and all the boys are rallying to go out and like let's go. And I'm obviously like, I want to. Like, yeah. why would I not? I yeah. would love to. Like, what if I what if I never make the NHL? Yeah. And you these guys one. want like this is my <laughs> one, one chance <laughs> to go out. But I couldn't I just couldn't do it. I just yeah. had a feeling like I, I I wasn't on the list for a meeting the next day. So that was a good sign. Okay. I mean, I was shouldn't right, be going right, home. Right. Yeah. And uh, it was a day off. So I wake up to a phone call at like 7.30. And Hexy's calling my hotel room. He's like, you need to come into the office. And I'm like, I'm calling Provorov because me and him at the same time, yeah. going through the same stuff, yeah. drafted in first round. Yeah. So we've been pretty close. And he's like, man, like, I just got a phone call from Hexy. Like, yeah, it's both. Yeah, there. me too. Jeez. So I'm like, oh man, like this is like, if I was making the team, he he definitely do this like just me and him kind of thing. Yeah, it's but kinda, yeah, he, you're probably thinking on both sides of the coin, right? Like we're either gonna get caught and sent home, or, or this we maybe made news. it. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. So I'm I call I call my parents, I call my agent. I'm like, hey guys, like I just got a call from Hexy that today's the cut day, so it should be it's probably bad news. I'm going in. I, I'll probably let you know in about an hour. Yeah. So I'm thinking Provy and I are the one two punch. Like, hey, we're out of here, both of us. Yeah. Cars. But that be little waiting. that little Travi in the back of your head's like, he's gonna offer oh, me a contract. I knew he's gonna he's offer me contract. something. <laughs> I was just praying. Like yeah. I was like, I yeah. you know, that one percent like that he would <laughs> So first thing he says is I sit and Provy was first. So he sits down and he does his meeting and he's all serious, shakes his hand and walks out. He's like, Hey man, good luck in there. Doesn't so give you any doesn't didn't not a wave, give me nothing. anything. Yeah. Until I come out and he's sitting there waiting for me, then I figured out that yeah, he was yeah, on the team pumped, too. Right? But yeah. when I sat down, Hexy's first words were, uh, "I hate, I hate keeping young guys." Perfect. And I was instantly, I was like, "Okay, like I'm looking for my plane ticket on his desk." I'm like, "Okay, it should be printed out here." <laughs> That's somewhere. the best. You go to a meeting, just kind of like, <laughs> yes, yeah, looking around, around <laughs> looking for stuff. <laughs> he's talking. I'm looking under his desk, like, "Where's my ticket, man?" Yeah. And and then he just stood up and shook my hand and said, "Congratulations! I'll see you tomorrow at practice." Oh, made the yeah, team, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, how that's awesome. It's a little different. Like some some teams do videos, and the whole team knows yeah. and stuff. But no one knew except, you know, Hexy brought us in, and it was a little more personal. It was pretty cool. So 
That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's good. And the boys, the boys must have been pumped the next day when you guys. They did they know or you guys kind of hey guys just in case you guys didn't know that's my stall now. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, when it first started, I was dressing in the in the center of the locker room. Oh, that's the best. Because there was too chair. many guys. Yeah, you know, you're and, like not really oh, on the team. It's terrible it's the because some guys were still like working for a spot. Yeah. Well, I knew because like I knew it wasn't a nine game trial. Like some guys have that. Yeah. But there was some guys there for. Oh, the, and you were you had made it, and you're still sitting in the middle. And I was still, oh, in, I man. was they right in the center. You it so was much, awful. Eh? Yeah. It was terrible. And you so. know, you know, Hexy, like, don't give him a stall no, yet. Even if there's a yeah. stall, and keep him in the And if you give him a stall, make sure it's three inches shorter than <laughs> everybody else's. Is what I'm gonna say. Oh, it was <laughs> it was terrible. I just yeah. Because, like, you don't know, and I'm looking, I think right in front of me is Gudis, too. And, like, now I know he's a teddy bear, but, like, yeah. I'm looking at this guy, dude, and yeah. he's got, like, three inches of hair sticking <laughs> off his face, and I can't even grow a beard. I'm like, oh, man, this guy's going to eat me. <laughs> so, yeah, it was tough. But it was, and probably sitting in his own stall, too. I'm like, oh, because this guy gets picked seventh right. overall. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I that's, get it. that's awesome. <laughs> and then that first year, like, what's it like? Like, playing in the, like, so now you've got there, now you kind of, you know, you get through your 10 games just because you're never 100% sure probably in those 10, are you? Like, or, or do you well, feel pretty comfortable uh, he, with he it? told us. He's good? He okay, told us that, like, if, if this was a tryout, then I wouldn't keep okay. you. So, so it you was a little there. different. Yeah, which is nice. Some guys are on that tryout yeah. and don't know. So. Suck. Yeah, that's tough, man. Um, so, yeah, so then you're there. And then what's that like, like, being there for that first, you know, kind of week, month, just as far as, like, I'm like how many times you pinch yourself being man, I, I'm actually. Oh. Well, I my, think the first time I my pinched job. myself is when I jump, like, I'm heading to a plane. Yeah, you know amazing. it's a little better than like well, laying on a bus, in bus <laughs> and smells like piss and there's yeah. there's Cheetos all over the floor and mud and yeah. snow. So it was like that's when it set in. Like I hopped on the plane and I'm like reclined back, pillow, blanket. Like amazing, yeah. I'll take a steak and uh, whatever. Like you know, it's yeah. like it, that's when it hit me yeah. that it was like uh, this is like the real deal. Yeah, and uh, I don't, you get used to it, but like that first month. Is insane. I remember gotta, my first game was like Kopitar too. So it was right. out in LA, and I'm yeah. just like, it's like, hey, Trav, you want to play? Like, can you stop like watching everybody? <laughs> it, even like G and Jakey on our I'm team sure, and stuff. It's man. like you're just like constantly like starstruck you, for that first you, bit. You know, you watch, you grow up with these guys, watching these guys. And oh like, yeah, like these guys are like these are the guys you picked on your in in uh, on PS4. And, like, oh yeah, and the, in my the, fantasy your, draw, I, I don't know if I go with G like. <laughs> Or, or Jakey ever. <laughs> not anymore. No, no, they're before. too old now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the ratings will rate yeah. down. They're down. But, yeah, it's different. Like, being in the locker room and you've you've heard of, you know, Couturier or you've yeah. heard of whoever, and and now they're sitting right here and, you know, they're your, your teammates. It's totally, like, a different thing. Yeah. And I would never look at them that way now. Yeah. Because I know now, they're right? all boneheads yeah. and like yeah. the same as me. Yeah. But like at the time, like I like there's probably kids now that like grew up with me around TPH that look at me that way in the NHL and yeah. It's just it's cool. Like, and that's the cool thing too. Like that's one thing with you know this podcast I'm trying to do is like you're just a dude. Like, yeah. you're, you're like, and you still, like you're still like kind of like flaws. you got stuck in like a like a like a like maybe a, like 21 year old body but you're still yeah. like a 10 year old a really. midget kind of no but you're a 10 year old like <laughs> yeah. you're like you're first like you know you're fun you if i had many sticks in the net on the hall you'd be out there playing yes, mini sticks with 100%. the kids right like but that's awesome like and i think you know you, you look at guys like crosby you look at guys like Couturier, drew like they're fun dudes mm-hmm. man they're playing ping pong they're jumping in the pool doing cannonballs they're the like, biggest they're, kids all right. of them they're all and that's and yeah and, you know and, and i guess you know going back to now you're there right so if you had to look back right now and you saw yourself at 10 or 12 or 15, what would you tell yourself? Now, you, uh, you made it, which is awesome, right? But looking back on it saying, make sure you do one, two, three, or one, two. It doesn't matter what it is, but, like, you got to make sure you focus on this in order to get to this. You know what I mean? Because it's a big step. Oh, no, like, yeah. You know, you're 10, 12, but, like, what are a couple of things that you would say that, man, you got you to gotta, you gotta make sure that you, you know, focus on. And let's go like this. Let's make it simple. Let's say, what are the what are the biggest skills you notice in the NHL that are so important? Because we talked about it yeah, yeah. today about, um, man, like guys practice all these toe drags, all these fancy moves, but you, you yeah. don't get a chance you to use them very often, it. you know? So what are, what are like, let's say, two skills that you think translate to NHL where, like, man, you need to have these if you're going to play at that high level? Well, I would say, well, it depends on the player, right? But, like, if you're – some guys, like, don't need skating because yeah. they're smart. Like, yeah. they obviously need skating. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. They I get would around say good enough. For me, yeah. it would be I would focus more on my skating. I ended up being a, a good yeah. skater as part of like what I do as my job is like my speed. Yeah. But 
I would definitely focus on that. Yeah. And like, which I did a lot growing up, but like, if I could tell myself that when I was younger to like work on, like even today we're on jam turns. Like, yeah. you know, you don't think about that stuff when you're younger. Right. Right. And like, yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it's just crazy. Like footwork, edge work, all that stuff. Power skating, like I would hate power skating. Like, yeah. It's the worst thing in the world Everybody, going to power skating. Like, where's the pox? Yeah. Like, I want to <laughs> yeah. go bar. Like, let's go. Yeah. So now I would go back and I would do that stuff every yeah. day. Like, and I know we did a lot of, at peak when yeah. I was when I was here. But like, even the outside stuff when you're at your minor hockey yeah. stuff and you know they they bring your power skater for a day. Yeah. It's like, Instead oh, of being that clown oh, in the back a waste of, line. of a day. Yeah, like, for sure. You know, I'm just gonna half time my skates and get through this one. <laughs> So yeah, that that's one thing, and then the other thing that I would work on is just my probably just releasing the puck as quick as you can yeah. because I I know a lot of guys think it's your shot's got to be accurate, which in times it does. You know, if you yeah. have a good shot, you got to hit your spot. But a lot of the times, like when you're scoring goals, it's just the how fast you yeah. can get it to the net. Yeah, and and like now we work on it a lot, like back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like release and. And that's one thing I think that you've gotten so much better at over the years. Like, well, you've yeah. been practicing at that high level all, like, you know, for the last two, three years. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be picking it up, seeing other guys yeah. do it, you know? I remember uh, Brett Hall. I don't know if you remember who he is. Uh, yeah, yeah. But no, I'm kidding. Kind of. Uh, so score Hall, goals, right? Yeah, I love to just hammer one time. <laughs> but he used to say, like, I say, oh, you know, how do you score so many goals? You pick your spot. He's like, no, just put my head. Like, because when one time there's coming, he's like, I just, yeah, just fire bury it. it. Yeah. But it was one of those things going back to that's an older school quick release, that old, yeah. you know, good hard one timer. But, he didn't stop the puck. He got it, shot it, got it, shot it. And just yeah. catch goalies, man, because goalies got to yeah. move, right? And, so, like, you know where the net is. Yeah. Generally, you know. Yeah. You know you, you know a goalie's going to drop his glove, so you're yeah. aiming glove high. You don't know exactly where yeah. glove high, but. You're going for that pocket. You're going up right? there. Yeah. And yeah. that's stuff that I would work on. And I and I even tell, like, today when we're skating, like, with Suzuki, I'm saying, like, hey, like, don't do that. Like, obviously, you, when you're coaching, you're like, don't do that stick handle. But, like, I'm thinking – Maybe hearing it from me or yeah, like, no, it's something good. like that. Yeah, like, that's great. Because I know when I was at his age, like trying to make the NHL, like you don't think of that stuff. Yeah. You think you need to like be sniping, you yeah. need to do this and do that. Yeah. Like you don't have time to like set the puck up and you know, lift your head and then try to pick the corner. Totally, like, yeah. And I mean and, and you know better than anybody, you're playing at that level, right? So I'm saying yeah. just like you said, like I'm saying because I coach at that level and I see like yeah. don't have time for that, but you're playing at it. And I think that's important for these young younger players to get mentorship from older guys. Like, yeah. and I, that's awesome. Like, I love when, hey, man, like, make sure that you're shoulder checking. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be huge for when you're looking for guys. Yeah, you know, and exactly. whatever it is. And they hear from you, like, oh, okay. Their dad could have been told, telling exactly. them. I could have been told. Like, guys guys an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's fun because yeah. even me and, like, Vandy, we still do it. Like, yeah. when we're on the ISO here, like, the other day, me and him were just messing around. And he's like, hey, like, in that spot, like, as a D, do this. Yeah, I, this right. This is what I'm thinking. Right. And it's like yeah. it, it's constant, like in it's not just like talking to the young guys. Like I'm, st- I talk to guys my age yeah. all the time, guys older than me. Like I'm constantly trying to like improve myself because yeah. I know the game's so different from when you're even oh, a junior. It's crazy, like when right? When you can like get in the slot, yeah, t one up, and well, like, you think back to the O and how much time you probably had that you didn't realize. Yeah. Thought, thought it was really fast, and you get up to that next level, you're like, yeah, wow, where did it go? Yeah. But yeah, I wish I had half that time, exactly. right? Because every level it gets so much tighter, so much faster, yeah. you know. And it gets smarter. Guys are in better positions, so it's a little bit easier to move sometimes. Yeah. But it's definitely yeah, everything's so much quicker for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then, I guess you know the, the other thing is when you look at kind of where you how how you went through your career and how you went through like kind of from minor hockey to junior to to pro, um, you know, would you would you credit a lot of that basically to type of character you are, obviously, but then also the group of people that you kind of surrounded yourself with as far as friends, family, oh, yeah. uh, agents, like all that kind of stuff. And how important of a role do those people play with you as far as just guidance and uh, humbling you sometimes like, hey, Trav, and relax. You know, yeah, dad yeah. calls you like, buddy, like, you know, no, no more hooting and hollering or, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever, right? But having that, having that kind of support system around you to be able to push you when you're low and pull you down when you're high, you know what I mean? Kind of move yeah. you around a little bit, right? How, how important is that to you as far as just, you know, navigating through this because it's not easy to do what you do no. i know everyone's like i plays in the nhl it makes good money like well you know it was tough times like yeah. it's not that this is not it it's that's a grind like being a professional athlete's not easy and i think you know how do you get there right and having that support system yeah. as a young kid even right well like, i think uh the main thing is like you st- i think it starts with parents yeah. because i knew if i was bringing you know whoever joe blow 
over to my house and he's being a, a dink and you, you know you can tell he's not the kind of guy that my parents want me around like they were so strict about who I surrounded myself with as yeah. far as friends yeah and it wasn't necessarily trying to keep me out of trouble it was just like the type of person they wanted me to be and then that helped me as far as hockey like yeah. if there was a guy who had you know no work ethic and didn't care about you know he was on my hockey team didn't care about hockey then they wouldn't want me surrounded yeah. with that. And even though he's a good kid, he's a fun yeah. kid, he just doesn't. And it's like you surround yourself with the people you want to be like. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. if I'm sitting there with a guy who doesn't care about his diet, then For I'm not, sure. what do I care about yeah. my diet? Then I'm going to go eat a hamburger. Like, yeah, yeah, burgers yeah. are awesome. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with McDonald's? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think that was part of it when I grew up was yeah. just a lot of my parents trying to guide me that way. Yeah. And then uh, – and I think, like, you guys did a great job as far as peak, like, by bringing in, like, a, a great group of guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I surrounded myself with, like, and, and now what is it? Uh, Chow, I forget what Chow went in the draft exactly, but. Um, to the Islanders, you mean? Third round, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, and Law, he yeah. ended up going first round. And then, like, even, like, McCann, like, he yeah. was in there, too, in the mix. And, and it was just a great group of yeah. guys who always pushed each other. Yeah, Like, it was, sure. like, humbling every day. Like, you're. You know, if, if you're taking an off day, I'm looking at Kraus or, or Vandy, who's working just as hard, if not harder, than I am. Yeah. So it's just constant, like, trying yeah. to better yourself every sure. single day. Yeah. And I think that's what the main thing is. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, keep I, pushing that bar, right? Yeah, I wasn't into the, the party stuff. Like, I think yeah. now that I've made it, I can enjoy myself, and I don't mind going out having beers with the guys. Like, it's all it's all part of it. Yeah. Like, I, I think I took that part out of my younger days. Yeah. And now I can enjoy myself. But I'll tell bit. you, like, your parties now are way better than they would have been in high oh, school. Oh, 100%. Like, way better. 100%. <laughs> Somebody told us when I was young, like, and Blazer, like, you know. You, you know Blah. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Like, when you're in junior, you, like, you know, pick your spots. It's like, it gets better as you get going, you know, up that, you know, whether it's college or whatever yeah. it is, right? And so true, though, right? How much more oh. fun is it now? Like, sacrifice a little bit as you're a young guy, whether you can't go to prom or you miss that Friday bush party or whatever it oh, is, yeah. right? Sacrifice a little bit there for long term is, is well, huge, I didn't do you know? any of that stuff. I never yeah. went to prom. I didn't want to go to prom as it is. Yeah. But I never went yeah. like any of that stuff. School, like dances or whatever. Yeah. I'm sure I would have lit it up. But yeah, it would have been awesome. It would have been moves, great. For sure, yeah. But yeah. uh yeah. no, I never did any of that yeah. stuff. And I, I'm sure it's probably because I live in Clacken. Yeah. That I didn't <laughs> yeah. get invited it's to a forty five minute stuff. commute anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So. Uh, that's fun. That, that, yeah, that's hilarious. Now coming back to clock and though a couple things for you. Now, what are your biggest hobbies? I know, you, but what do you love? Like, I know you love. You got a couple of passions in your life aside from yeah. hockey. And what are those? It's uh, well, fishing's probably number one right now. It, it varies. Yeah, fishing right now is probably like it's just Loving taken it. over yeah. my head. Like every time, like I'm looking at the weeds on the way home. Like, is that blowing the right direction for the lake? Like, I'm looking at leaves on the trees. I'm looking at like. <laughs> The way the clouds are moving, yeah. I'm like going insane, man. I'm like, yeah. just, it's all about the lake and fishing right now, and and that like my dad and brother are so into it that's too. Cool. Yeah, that's good. So we get to share that, and and then uh, I love golf. Too. Okay, cool. So I'm yeah. big into golf. I've gotten pretty good at yeah. it over the years. I haven't practiced enough this year, but yeah. uh, good enough to be whoever I need to be. Yeah, good. Okay. And then uh, <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, so you're gonna be joining the tour when you're done playing. Pretty much, pretty much yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's, okay. uh, it's like yeah. I mean, it's set, up in the air. set I your could. goal. Set your goals low and just see what happens. Yeah, I'm I mean, still yeah. young. Like the golf yeah. careers, like you peak when you're later, anyways. That's so true. That time. Yeah, that's true. But uh, my brother used to make a track actually around home. It was like a uh, eleven hole. Course. Oh yeah. Because we live like yeah, yeah. I, I'm in the middle of nowhere, so like. Chase would be out there in the morning with the lawnmower, just like fresh no cut way. greens. Meanwhile, there's like an inch between each piece of grass, <laughs> right? So yeah. like your balls just like jumping yeah. across the grass. Yeah. And our flags are just like sticks with like a beer can Amazing. on top. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So it was awesome. We'd From be, the party the night before exactly, your parents had, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and then uh, hunting as well. Okay, so, cool. But I don't get to do much of that anymore. That's tough, right? During the season. Yeah. Now, do you guys get anything in Philly? You guys hunt a little bit in Philly? Do any of you guys hunt? Uh, no, no one really hunts, no. but there's good like duck hunting and, and there, uh, yeah? deer hunting out that way. But I just, it's so hard it's to tough, find the yeah. time. Like, what am I going to do? Drag the deer into the, to the rink? Like. Yeah, I'll bring it into your, like, condo. Yeah, and like, and just out. coming into the to Philly, like, Griffin Hotel. I'm just, like, dragging this deer <laughs> up the elevator. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm sure that'll go over good. Yeah. Like, like, Tenants love that stuff, though. Tenants love yeah, it. Especially the vegans. The vegans yeah, they, the, yeah, all the... 
Yeah, yeah. I got a nice that. vegan, actually great vegan spot right below my oh, spot. Yeah. So I'm sure they'll they just would, let they me bring them right it. up. Yeah. Now do you eat there once in a while? Pretty good food. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it's all right. it takes you right to the can. I'll tell you that. Like it's not good. It's not <laughs> it's good cleaner. for the stomach. It's it a good cleanser. Yeah. There you go. But I don't oh, know. Oh, it's good. I wish I could do more of it though. Like yeah, it's tough stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'll figure sure. it out once I'm more comfortable and I think you know a little more. I'm not scared to to not come to the rink on time and things like that. Like. I think yeah. I'll be able to set it up, but we'll see. So good year last year, coming up here on your uh, on your last la- last year entry level. So what's your mindset kind of going in this Thanks year? Thanks for reminding as, me. Yeah, like no, I just uh, forgot about hey, it. Hey, no pressure. Stress was no gone. pressure. <laughs> uh, so what's your mindset going in this year? As far as you know, obviously you want to produce, you want to do well, and you know, but going back to you've you've done this before, where you've gone through pressure cookers a little bit, right? So yeah. this is going to be a little bit of a I don't I don't want to say pressure cooker, but you know, good yeah, luck. just like good sets luck. up the rest good of luck. my life. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I honestly have felt so different about this one just because uh, I, I know, you know, my expectations coming in is obviously to, to better myself than last year and, and my stats and our team. I, I think everything's going to go as, as hopefully as tracking, team's tracking well. Like we're like, we're yeah. on the right track. Yeah. So, and then as far as, as uh, individually, like if I'm where I'm supposed to be, like I'm supposed to be, uh, playing with G and Coots again, like that's the plan. As far as when I left for uh, for home, like, yeah. that was my exit meeting. And you know, when you, when you're playing with players like that, it, it's like it's it's a confidence booster for me because for sure. I know like as long as I'm skating hard and doing my part, like I know Coots and, yeah. and G are pros. Like yeah. they they are always on. They're ready. Like and I, I just can't see how you know things can. It, obviously, you can go through slumps and stuff, yeah. but. Um, you guys caught some good fire this yeah, year. Yeah, like we had a lot of good chemistry. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm not stressing about the whole contract stuff because I just feel so confident in, in our line and, yeah. and what we produced last year and, and our team. So I think there's a lot of positives around coming yeah. into this year. And you know whatever happens happens too, right? Yeah. Like who knows? Yeah, I, it's I, like, hands, what if right? I do have the worst year? Like yeah. nothing I can do, but I'm I'm doing whatever I can do this summer. Yeah. And then after that, like it's all up to yeah the hockey gods. But I no, guess. you're right. Like a lot, of, if you put too much time, you're there. Like you're in the NHL right now. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're gonna get a second chance. It's gonna be fine, yeah. right? And I think for you, exactly, just play, just play your game. And you said some way along to, uh, when we're talking about the World Juniors about you blowing guys up. And I think that's one part of your game that uh, sometimes you go too far in that yeah. in that zone. Yeah. But that's some that's another part of your game that I think is a real good skill that you have is the fact that you yeah. can you I can, can play move con- up and down, right? The, yeah. Like if I have yeah. to, I can. Totally. play different roles like but i'm trying to get away from that because, yeah for sure you don't want to get when you're playing guy, 82 you can... and as you're hitting guys yeah. every single night they get a wear on you especially sure. if you're playing like high on minutes like if i was to play with g and coots again like they're they're up there in minutes yeah they get like, a lot man and yeah. and if i'm trying to run around and yeah, you know, go toe to toe with Oshi every night. Then like, it's and it's tough too. Like, let's be honest. I mean, you're a fit guy, strong guy, but you're you know you're going up against six foot, six foot five, you know, oh, six yeah. foot like big boys, you right? Want to avoid them as much. As yeah, I mean, you're hitting that. It's fine, but that's you know, you go and make three sh- three hits in a shift. People don't realize it, but that's a beggar. Like, oh, that it's is terrible. tiring, man. Yeah, and plus my that. shifts are like two minutes as it is. But yeah, so like I'm bagged when <laughs> yeah. I'm coming off. Coach loves hearing that, eh? <laughs> Coach, by the way, I'll be out there for about two minutes, and oh, that and man. that and that winger that's falling is just pop. Yeah, yeah. Right? oh, he's, like, he's I can't so wait. happy. Yeah. He's getting like a twenty second yeah. shift, just like <laughs> quick defense. Because I'm changing in the D zone too, Obviously right? On the back so track, he's yeah. getting a quick D zone yeah. shift and out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, no, that's great. Well, listen, Travi, really appreciate you coming in today, man. It was yeah. awesome. No, it was great good. to catch up, and uh, yeah, it was really fun. So thanks a lot, buddy. Yeah, thanks. All right, see ya. See ya.